I believe. I'm looking for a little red icon to tell me it started. There we go, recording, okay. Um, so hello everybody, my name is Jean McClurkin. I'll be leading this kind of training today. I'm gonna ask anybody else on the call from Telogen, if you notice people coming into the meeting, in the waiting room, in the lobby, please go ahead and admit them. I will be presenting the slide deck, so I may or may not get the notification immediately, and I don't want folks to, to miss out on this content. So we'll go ahead um, and I'm looking for help from folks there. Uh, very easy to get people admitted. We'll add a few more folks as we get started. But let's make sure everyone's in the right place. So thank you all for attending and or viewing this training if you're viewing it as a recording. As what that means is that you have taken time out of your day and know that we greatly appreciate that. That is not lost on us. You all have very busy lives, very busy days and doing very important work. So we appreciate you taking the time to spend with us today. Um, we're definitely not gonna go over the hour. We might even get out a little early depending on questions. So your time is valuable and we understand that. This is the first enhancement feature that we have rolled out since starting the PASAR work in Colorado in March of 21. Um, we hope to have more to come as we move forward. We are a company that's founded in continuous improvement. So we, we do look to continue to update and modernize the system as we keep going. This next hour for today and the Q&A sessions that follow will be focused on what we are calling the Pass R2 Evaluation Follow-Up Task. So that's what we're here to learn about today. So let's get started with our agenda so that we all know what our same page is for today. We will be focusing on providing some context, right, for why and where this enhanced feature came from. Before diving into the details, we're gonna talk about the workflow, we're gonna share screen screenshots from Qualitrack, and then we'll finish up with some of the data that we anticipate being able to have as a result of this feature and lead into an open Q&A as time allows for what we have time left. And I also want to be clear that this feature we're talking about today is not going to be live in the system for about three or four more weeks. So no one's going to see this tomorrow or next week. Uh, we have some time. So we wanted to get this training and these materials out to people early to allow some time for the information to digest, for people to formulate their questions. We really want people to be prepared uh, for this new feature, even though it's a kind of a small, small little piece, but we, we believe it has value. So we want to get it out in front of folks early. So that said, as promised, let's start our training off with some context, right? The why, it's important to know the why whenever we're talking about something new. So Telogen has been performing level two evaluations since 2019, when the current level two form was first built in Qualitrack. We've always been passionate about making meaningful and appropriate specialized service recommendations through our PASSAR Level 2s. And hopefully many of you engaging in this training have seen that firsthand, gotten to work with our staff as we're doing the Level 2s, as we're making recommendations that we are passionate and we do care about what we're doing and the relevance of that. However, right now, typically the pass our process ends with the notice of determination, and then we never get any feedback uh, unless the members we submitted for a status change later. So Telogen, as a Quinn QIO organization at our roots, we thrive on data and feedback as ways to improve the system and enhance the quality of patient care, though, that said, we firmly believe that in order to be consistently implemented, any new data collection effort must involve the lowest possible provider burden and at the same time, create the maximum utility across all stakeholders. So Colorado State, the folks on the phone from Colorado have partnered with us to make our vision of collecting provider feedback on the specialized service recommendations that we make through the PASSAR process a reality. 
The development team that works behind the scenes on Koala Track has been working for the past several months to create an automated and easy to use system that takes truly minimal effort, yet produces very meaningful data. So we're excited today to share it with you now, and we're grateful that so many people have dialed in for the live training. Um, I do appreciate that. Again, we wanna be very respectful of your time and know that this has been a passion project for us for a while, and, and we're just really excited to be able to talk about it today. So. I've got notes, so I'm going to try to stay focused, even though I'm very excited. Uh, so with that context for the why uh, the feature was created and kind of the evolution of that, we wanted to also let you know the details, right? So let's talk about the what. What is this new feature? What is it all about? So as all of you know, all of you that work in Qualitrack know, at the request, there's a provider panel that you have to fill out. And in that provider panel, you identify a treating facility. Well, this treating facility is meant to be the nursing facility location where the members currently residing and receiving services. So the entire PASSAR2 follow-up task is built around recognizing that facility, having that information already be in Qualitrack, and having the Qualitrack user accounts that are connected to that facility and the visibility for that facility uh, already being in the system. So when user accounts were originally created back whenever your organization got access to Qualitrack, your organization identified an authorized official as a person who could manage the Qualitrack user accounts for each little individual at your organization moving forward. So this follow-up task we're talking about today is an automated trigger that happens behind the scenes once a level two evaluation is closed and the notice of determination, what we refer to as the NOD is issued. A countdown clock is started and 30 calendar days later, the system all on the back end creates the follow-up task and puts it in the queue for anybody connected with that treating facility uh, that has their account connected with that MPI. And at the same time that the task is generated, the system also looks for that email address that was listed for the authorized official when they started and sends them an email notifying them that the task is there. So there's gonna be a couple ways. We'll see some screenshots today about what that email looks like, which could then be forwarded on to whoever needs it. Um, and also the task and how that's visible to anybody uh, right away. No one has to do anything. You don't have to trigger that. It's all happening behind the scenes. Uh, so again, this task itself has the three simple questions. So we'll go through that now and it's on the slide in the kind of bottom half of the slide here. So we wanna know is the member currently at your facility? That's question number one. And then if no, that's the only question. There's just a, a way to answer that question with some multiple choices of, of potential reasons why the member is no longer there. And then that that's it, D oh, done and done. No, no more to do there. If yes, if the member is still at your facility, then there'll be a list of the specialized services recommended that came through on the NOD that are at the bottom of the level two evaluation. Part of the way we designed the system is that those specialized services are just simple check boxes at the bottom of the level two evaluation. And that's a one-to-one -one match with the needs table where we describe in detail how those specialized services are recommended for that individual. So what pulls through to this follow-up part of the system is those check boxes. So it'll just show you the list of what was recommended, not the whole needs table, but just the list of the specialized services. There's a breakout for the mental illness specialized services versus the intellectual and developmental disability specialized services, which there could be both or just one of the two. And for each service that's listed, there's a simple yes or no question. Um, if it, the answer is yes, it's been implemented, no further questions. If the answer is no, it hasn't been implemented, you get a simple little free text box. It just is your opportunity to say why, to explain that about any challenges that you've had. Um, and there'll also is a free text, optional free text at the bottom to give us any more information. Again, this is your ability to provide us with follow-up feedback so that we can continue to improve the system. Um, we'll also see when we look at the screenshots, 
there's the ability to upload any relevant documentation, but this step, this step is not required. So I'm just going to, before we get into the workflow, I'm going to jump back and see, are we able, has everyone been getting admitted? I've been hearing little beeps. Yep. I, I think so. Thank you, Callie and Beth. You guys are awesome. All right. I've just been hearing the beeps, but I'm trying to keep myself focused. So I've also got a script that I'm reading from just to make sure um, that we're, we're giving the right information to everybody. So good. All right. So next up, those of you that know me know I am a very visual person. So rather than just also those steps we just talked about on the last slide, we've put it into a visual, into a workflow. So now that we have context and details in mind, we did want to provide you with a, a visual of what this, this process is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get my little laser pointer here too. So starting with the level two evaluation, once it's completed and specialized services are recommended, that's what starts this whole process. And I will note that this process is dependent on there being specialized services recommended. This doesn't matter if there's a pass our condition, yes or no. This doesn't matter about the level of care for the nursing facility length of time. Uh, this is specific to were there specialized services recommended. So we're only looking for, yes, we recommended specialized services. Um, as we know from prior trainings and from knowledge about PASSAR, there are three goals to PASSAR, right? One, to identify a PASSAR condition, yes or no. The other, to talk about level of care. And then the third one, to talk about specialized services. So this entire follow-up workflow is specific to specialized services. And as a lot of you who've experienced Telogen level two PASSARs know, we, we make recommendations to try to be helpful for the member, regardless of if there's a pass our condition. Uh, we really do look to try to help you guys improve member care. That's what we're here for. We're an outside objective voice that has the opportunity to meet with the member and offer some suggestions. And we are going to do that regardless. Um, so the, the, these, this follow-up task is based on those recommendations, kind of regardless of pass our condition. So wanted to note that as well. So once specialized services have been recommended, we have to wait for 30 calendar days to elapse. So this is that automatic timer on the back end, and this is 30 calendar days, not business days. Uh, so we wanted to give some time um, to kind of see how everything shook out to give you guys as a treatment team the opportunity to discuss these recommendations. Again, they're being made from an outside objective person. You guys know your member, you know your resident, you know your elder. So please, you know, we want you to give you time to, to digest the recommendations. And then that's when the automated email gets sent again. And this is sent to the email on file when the Qualitrack accounts were created for the authorized official. That's AO is authorized official at the identified treating facility. And one other thing I'll note now is if you guys ever need to make changes to who your authorized official is, if you ever need to update an email address, sometimes names change, um, agencies get purchased and shuffled around and extensions of emails can change. We are aware that that happens. So you have the ability to update that information. Our Qualitrack support team, uh, which I share their contact information on the last slide of this presentation, they're always available to help you process through that and get that information changed so that again, there is a relevant email for the authorized official. What we didn't wanna do was bombard every single user at that MPI with an email. So we're focusing on the authorized official as the recipient of that email. But again, that can be forwarded on to anybody. And the second thing here is that the task that's generated, any provider can see. So you don't have to receive the email to be able to do the task. So again, that's the next slide here is any user with visibility of the task can complete the questions. So this is, and there'll be a link in the email. So you can either complete these three simple questions through the link in the email or through the task queue. Um, and we'll again, give screenshots of what all of that looks like today. So what happens on the back end after that, once all of those questions are completed, we start getting data. Telogen is going to be running monthly data analysis to try to look for trends. 
right? What What's happening with the recommendations? What's happening with the specialized services? Are there maybe specialized services in the list that are never recommended? Um, other ones that are always recommended? Like what's the frequency of these recommendations being made? What's the frequency of the recommendations being implemented? There's just a lot of good data that we can get out of this, which, which we will go through later too. Uh, the other thing I wanna note as we talk about the workflow is that nowhere in this process are you waiting on intelligence staff to do anything. Um, this is an automated process behind the scenes just to provide us with some feedback and data. Uh, this is not something where you have to submit for review and we're gonna review it and say yay or nay. We're not doing that. Um, this is just for feedback and, and again, data analysis so that the system can be improved. Um, this is not us reviewing anything. Um, and coming up with a, an, any kind of an outcome. We're not, we're not doing that. So um, that's, that's the workflow in a nutshell. Um, and again, the slide deck will be available um, after the, the training for everybody. Actually, I think it's available now and I can show you guys where that is, but let's get into some screenshots next. We got the next several slides are devoted to screenshots so that we can show you what this looks like. We can show you what the process will look like in practice. So this slide here shows the first email that's sent to the authorized official, and then also the reminder email. And the reminder email is sent 10 days after the first email if the task remains open and not completed. Then another 10 days later, there's a second reminder email that goes out, again, if the task has not been completed. It will stay there on the queue if it's still in progress. So, and again, the email goes only to the authorized official on record for the treating facility. However, anyone with a connection to the treating facility will be able to see the task and can decide to work it. So some things to point out about these emails. Um, the title of the email will be pass our two follow up. The title of the reminder emails will be pass our level two follow up reminder. So that you'll be able to distinguish that. The address they will come from is do not reply at Telogen. That's not something you could reply to. That's kind of a, an auto-generated email system. And as you see here, that blue, there is a link to go straight to the, to the task in Qualitrack. I did do this from our kind of stage play system since it's not live yet. Um, so this does say stage. In all reality, it won't have that stage line there. But this is a, a show of what the emails look like. And you can see kind of our, we did the 10 day timer. We practiced this October 10th and then October 21st. Um, so we got the 10 days there. Uh, again, that's 10 calendar days. So that's the emails that go out. And next is the screenshot of the task queue. So this slide contains a screenshot of the actual task queue um, and the actual task in the queue. For those of you uh, watching this training that have experience with the what we call the RFI task, which is request for additional information, this should look familiar, right? The whole process is the same um, so that you'll have the same steps for completing that. So this screenshot right here that we have shows an example of an in progress task so that it has a specific assignee. So you can see a specific assignee. So brand new tasks, the first time they're in here, will have a status of new, and instead of a name, this will say unassigned in the queue. And again, anyone would be able to see that. One thing I will note here too, just as a, a helpful guide and reminder for people, this place where it says nine columns selected, I don't know if, if folks have figured out yet, but this is all customizable per user and, and it saves for the to say the same every time you log into the system but you can change it at any time to see what columns are visible in your task queue so you can customize that and personalize that some of the main ones we'd like to highlight for you if you don't already have them included in your task queue might be good to go in here and add is task type so right now it may just say task type, may say the RFI task, but this new feature is gonna appear as a PASSAR level two follow-up. It's gonna be the name of it. Um, and you'll see Roger Rabbit is the kind of example one we use for the purposes of training. And it'll be, always be assigned by robot, right? Cause this is an automated process behind the scenes. So it'll always come in from robot. So that's how, that's how you'll know. So you'll be able to, to see this task queue here. 
And then as with any task in Qualitrack, when you're working from the task queue, you have this little three dots, which we call the ellipses. Once you're in the task queue, you click on this ellipses and one of the actions will either say start if the, pro if the task status is new, or it will say resume if the task status is in progress. So this is the task queue and what it will look like. So I will move on to the next screenshot. So this is the entire follow up task. This is all of the questions. Some of the subsequent screenshots will be zoomed in so you can see it a little bit better. I just wanted to start with one big screenshot so you can literally see the entire thing um, to see how brief it is. So, so the next three slides are screenshots of the actual follow up task questions. And there are essentially kind of two main sections. Up here is the documentation. And then we also have the actual questions down here. And again, like I said before, the documentation upload is optional. It's completely optional. You don't have to do it. But if you do have helpful documentation as we go to start building um, some data, some feedback here, please feel free to upload it. Um, if you have any kind of passer notes and you don't want to reduplicate by typing, you're like, oh, I'm just going to upload the passer notes so that they can see it. That's perfectly fine because that may very well have already captured all the feedback on specialized services you would like to provide. Um, you, you have the ability to do that. Then under the heading of the follow up, the system will auto populate, like I said before, whatever recommendations were made on the level two for specialized services. And these are separated out by a section for mental illness recommendations and a section for the IDD recommendations. Um, and all of those will be yes or no's and we'll zoom in on that in just a moment. But this is it in its entirety. This is what the task looks like. Um, so just to let people know. All right, so the first screenshot I want to kind of zoom in on is the first question. The first question is, is the member currently at your facility? And for the answers here, we're using both discrete data and a combination of the qualitative free text. So if you pick no, the member's not at your facility, then you get two questions and then you're done. That's it, just these two questions. There'll be a drop down for like a discharge disposition that has some possibilities of what may have happened, um, including a member discharged the community, another facility, so it was a transfer, maybe back to the hospital, maybe a psych hospital, maybe it was an IDD facility, or maybe the member's no longer with us, um, or, or another reason. So you have that as a required field there just to give us some more information. And then you have an optional narrative free text down here where you can give us more information. And again, this is optional. Um, it may be that you pick other because none of those options apply and you have a little bit more to say, um, or it may be that you just have more to tell us. That's fine too. This is again, feedback for, for us in the process of, of post evaluation follow-up. So that is all the questions and your kind of time with the task would end. You'd hit complete and you'd be done. Let's say you said, yes, the member is still at our facility. Well, this is an example of just the mental illness section. The IDD section would look the same. I'm just using this as an example. So this last screenshot is that zoomed in of this section of the, um, the pass our follow-up task. And again, simple yes or no questions with the same kind of skip logic. Uh, there is gonna be a box that's gonna be required with a little asterisk if you select no, the service has not been implemented. And in that box, we're just looking for a brief explanation of why, again, just to give us feedback, let us know what challenges you may have had, or if the treatment team felt it was not appropriate, uh, really just get giving us feedback on why that recommendation didn't hasn't worked for the member, um, hasn't been implemented. And then at the bottom here, that's where we have that additional optional narrative, because maybe if all of your answers were yes, you just don't want some more space to talk about it. Uh, we do realize that people and situations are snowflakes. They don't always fit nicely into a yes or no. Sometimes it's kinda, <laughs> right? Not completely yes to the letter and not completely no, but we ended up with something in the middle. So that's where we would hope to get some more information from you about that middle ground and what that looked like. So that's also a great place to use this narrative free text as well. Um, we don't expect responses in the free text fields to have any specific character limit. 
you know, we're not looking for a novel, uh, just something that can be helpful for, for us as we try to, again, take the next step after having made these recommendations. So that finishes up our screenshots of what the system looks like, just to get you guys kind of prepared and used to that. Very similar to how the other parts of Qualitrack work. Nothing brand new. Uh, we have a lot of skip logic, yes, no's, and in other places, like the pass our level one screen has a lot of that. So kind of the intelligent motto is to try to keep it simple um, and, and really allow for, for this to be something that anybody can use uh, without having to go through extensive, extensive training on how to click multiple buttons. It's supposed to be easy. So uh, to connect back to the point of why we wanted to create this new feature, being about system improvement, this slide here showcases some of the data that we anticipate being able to obtain through this new feature. The goal here is to find data about challenges in implementation of specialized services and the appropriateness. We want feedback on the appropriateness of the recommendations being made. We really do want to go above and beyond having pass RB about checking boxes that something was merely done or not and move to something that has value to improving people's lives. That's what we really want to do and, and how we approach PASSAR. Not just, yep, done it, PASSAR, check the box, we can move on, we're done with the PASSAR part, but really have it be something that says, hey, if we're going to take the time to meet with somebody and we're going to take the time to make recommendations, how did it go? We want some feedback on that um, because we care about what we've done. So Colorado is such a vast and varied landscape, and we all know that. There may be opportunities once we start pulling this data and starting to look at it, where we start seeing real concrete data trends by county in terms of the specialized services implementation that right now may be more anecdotal. Um, we may see some real concrete numbers emerge from this quantitative process. And there may be an opportunity to change what we think of as specialized services to better suit the needs of the members. Um, so an example of kind of quantitative question that could be potentially answered is what percentage of the time is individual therapy implemented across the provider community? Um, and again, we could look at that by county. We could look at that in so many of these different kind of parameters that we've set up. Um, really, it gives us that ability to, to get feedback on a larger scale and then come up with some some really good, really good recommendations and outcomes. All right. So next up. Yeah. So similarly to the quantitative data we hope to get, the qualitative data is an equal opportunity to improve the system. And here we go. Um, we all have anecdotal information, like I said on the last slide too, about why certain recommended specialized services may be challenging to implement. Right? But having free text statements, even if they're brief, get, giving us qualitative feedback on 100% of level two evaluations with the specialized services being recommended will help us provide a first ever data set of meaningful information that we can provide back to the state on a larger scale than what's currently available. I know right now, I think uh, CDPHE and some other folks, um, the SEPs will all do kind of their own kind of compliance and quality and, and audits, uh, but those are, you know, not necessarily on every level two done. Um, and it doesn't give us timely feedback necessarily. So I think the, the goal of this is to, again, low burden, high utility, get a large data pool so that we can do some system improvement stuff that really intelligence focused on doing um, just for the purposes of improving pass off for members. Um, but that we really thought that that had a lot of a lot of merit. So that's the point of the data, both quantitative and qualitative we're hoping to get. So we do have about a half an hour left um, and I want to take as much time as we want to be able to go through some questions. We do have uh, sessions next week to let this content digest a little bit to give people time that couldn't attend this training in person to give them time to watch it and digest a little bit. Um, we wanted to be able to make sure that that's in the coming weeks. Um, so again, we will have the dedicated time and those three options for the three 30 minute sessions that follow up are going to be Monday. So this coming Monday, the 29th at 2.30, Wednesday, the 1st at 11.30, 
and Friday the 3rd at 9 a.m. Please do not feel you have to attend all of them. They are optional. Uh, you can go to one. You can go to all. We'll be recording those as well. Um, we want to make sure that, that people are able to get some questions answered before they start seeing these in their task queue, um, just so that we can, again, give people context, give people details, uh, so that no one is surprised. That's really, we want to be as transparent and, and ahead of the game as possible. If for any reason you don't have the links to these sessions, which were in the original email, uh, invite that got you the link to get to this session if you're watching it in person. Um, that's the same email that has the links to the Q and A's. But if for any reason you don't have the links you need, uh, please feel free to email Obi. Obi, I did offer up your email. Hopefully that's okay. Um, it's on the website. <laughs> um, we will have this PowerPoint available for reference. Um, like I said, the slides are already published at HickPuff's PASSAR website under training materials. I did look right before this training started and sure enough, they're there. So you're able to get the slide deck that I shared. So you can see the screenshots, you can see the workflow, uh, you can see some of the details there, share it with other people that weren't able to attend today. Um, if you know that they won't be able to attend any other sessions, please, that's important information. Uh, we're also gonna work with partners at the Colorado Healthcare Association to try to help get this message out there. Again, really our, our goal is that people aren't surprised. People know what this is, they know why we're doing it, and they're invested in trying to help us make this a reality. Uh, so again, the recording from today will be published as soon as possible. It does take a little longer to get recordings out there, but we are going to try to work to get it done, even though this is a holiday week uh, for most folks. So um, another final reminder I want to make before we kind of open up the microphones is this feature was turned on last week. But what that means is that the 30 day timers started last week. So we still have about three to four weeks before anyone should see anything in their task queue or anyone should get any emails. If for any reason you do see an email, you do see a task queue before you would have expected it, um, like today, tomorrow, this week, next week, please, please reach out. The final bullet on this slide is the contact information for our support our technical support side of the house, please feel free to reach out to them um, and report that. This is a new feature for us. We are we are rolling this out for the first time. And though we've done a lot of testing, we've done a lot of demos with the state and we're really happy with it. We, we, do, we do have our technical people on standby to help with any issues um, where things kind of work as not anticipated. So we definitely have people standing by to help with that. So that kind of concludes the content. So again, we do have about 25 minutes um, to go here, and I do want to open it up and see if we have any questions, and I'll leave this on the Q&A. Um, so, oh yeah, it looks like Obi shared the link for the slides. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Obi. So yeah, it's great that that's already out there for people. It's very rare that we actually get the slides out before we do the training. So I was really kind of impressed to see that the, the link for the slide deck was already up before we um, we started this, this training. So glad to see that. So that all of that said, uh, let me go ahead and just see. Feel free, um, go off mute or put questions in the chat or comments, uh, really any, any questions, comments, concerns, anything that kind of hits people now. Otherwise, I do recognize sometimes this just needs time to digest. So um, I will stop talking and allow people time to comment. And while we're looking for folks that feel comfortable talking, I know we have a bigger group, but it's hard to feel comfortable talking sometimes. Um, if you can, please put in the chat what nursing facility you're from, just so that we know. Um, I do see a lot of familiar faces. So I myself do the PASSOR level two, so I know some of you. Um, 
but just out of curiosity where folks might be from, um, let us know. Uh, we're grateful again that you guys that are here were able to take the time. Yay! Hallmark. Hi. Okay. Yay. Harmony point. Thank you. Thanks for doing that, guys. Normally, whenever I do trainings, again, those of you that know me, know I love to let people talk and use your vocal cords right at the beginning. So um, I just didn't know how quickly we get through this. I, I wanted to make sure we had time. But normally, I would have loved to have kind of had a round robin and go around and let folks share where they're from and maybe a little expectation they had for this, excuse me, this training. I know showing up to something without knowing what it's going to be about is always a, a hesitation moment. So special thank you to the people that dialed in, not really exactly knowing what this was going to be. So hopefully that that hasn't been too intimidating and that's gone OK. Um, so again, thank you guys for, for putting stuff in the chat. I appreciate that. It's nice to see everybody. OK. I'm not sure, Obi, um, if you have any other comments about the content I've shared, um, any other statements you want to kind of offer up to the group? Nothing from me. Good job, Jean. Thanks so much for the presentation. Thanks, everyone, for participating. Yeah, we didn't want to take away time from the stakeholder groups that have been focused on the pass all rule and all that. So we really did want this to kind of be a, a, a uh, again, not double dipping with time, but allowing the the use of that for people. But um, okay. So I will, like I said, stay on for about the next 15 minutes. I am going to go ahead and stop the recording just because we are done with our content. Um, and that way we'll kind of leave the Q&A's that will be off the recording. Um, and I may type up an FAQ style frequently asked questions later, but let me go ahead and try to stop the recording now.